until now we have been uh, learning the unit 1 where we are we were focusing on basics of leveling, surveying and contours. Now we move on to unit number 2 that is theodolite surveying and traversing. In this, uh, uh, in the first uh, lesson of this unit number 2, we are going to learn about theodolite instrument, its types and introduction to the modern electronic theodolite. So theodolite, uh, first let us look at the parts and technical terms which are associated with theodolite. We are going to learn what is, uh, what are the different parts. Uh, then we are going to learn about for what are the different applications of theodolite. So this is a theodolite machine which you see on the, it is a uh, very popular instrument uh, for the last uh, 4 to 5 decades, uh, uh, sorry, uh, last uh, 200 years you can say uh, from the British times when the great trigonometrical survey was carried out, uh, it is a popular instrument for measuring the horizontal and vertical angle. So, uh, in this uh, we are focusing to the second outcome uh, of this uh, course that is uh, application of theodolite, tachometer, total station and such other advanced instruments uh, for direct and indirect methods of surveying. So, we, has, we have measured horizontal angle earlier by compass. So, we will be seeing that the compass is having an accuracy of 30 minutes, whereas in the theodolite the accuracy will be 10 to 20 seconds. So, it will be so accurate for measurements of horizontal angles. The system of surveying in which the angles are measured with the help of theodolite is called as theodolite surveying. Basically, we are using the uh, theodolite instrument. So, if you look at the classification or types of theodolite, there may be uh, many types like transit, non-transit, vertical, optical, micrometer, electronics. I have purposefully put a uh, slash mark along uh, across certain types because these are absolute and not available today in the market. The transit theodolite is the common vernier theodolite, whereas the non-transit theodolite where we have to pick the instrument and turn it uh, by lifting it uh, is not available today. Then the optical theodolite which used to work on the uh, light reflection for measuring angles uh, also has become absolute. Then the micrometer theodolite which had a very fine micrometric uh, uh, graduation which was later converted for um, angular measurements is also not available. And then we have got the latest electronic theodolite today. So, uh, the types of theodolite, this is the standard conventional vernier theodolite also called as the transit theodolite. Then these are the earlier vertical optical theodolites where there was a mirror uh, which was reflected and then uh, which was used for the angular measurements. Then there are latest theodolites, the electronic theodolite has got a screen, uh, digital screen is there for angular measurements. You do not have to measure the angle on a graduated ring which we normally do in the case of a theodolite. So, what is a transit theodolite? It is a theodolite which is having uh, a telescope uh, which, revolve, which revolves around a complete revolution of 360 degree al along its horizontal axis as well as its vertical axis. So, the non-transit one, the telescope cannot, could not be uh, transmitted and they are therefore no, now become obsolete. The vernier theodolite is named so because uh, for reading the graduated circle, there are different verniers are available. And these verniers uh, are used for measuring the finer details of the angular measurements using the vernier. The micrometer screw is now not used uh, nowadays. So, let us look at the parts of the theodolite. So, the transit theodolite has got a vertical, you can see here, this is the vertical axis and these are the uh, vertical axis of the instrument. Then this uh, from coming from top, there is the objective. This telescope is now kept uh, uh, instead of horizontal in for the purpose of understanding. The telescope has kept has been kept vertically just for demonstration. It can be rotated about this axis which is called as a horizontal axis which is also called as the trunion axis. Uh, there is a objective, the, the telescope body, the altitude bubble. Now, what is this altitude bubble? The altitude bubble is a bubble which is uh, on the top of the vert vertical plate and this altitude bubble is uh, used for measuring the vertical angles. Then you have got the vertical clamping screw, the trunion axis, the vertical circle plate where the vertical angles are measured, the eyepiece of the telescope. And then this lower part of the body is very much like the dumpy level, you have got the foot screws, the tripod, the base, etc. 
Now, these are the different fundamental lines of a uh, theodolite, the horizontal axis. So, the horizontal axis is this one, which is also called as the Trunnion axis. Uh, then you have got the line of sight. The line of sight is the sight defined by the eyepiece of the telescope. The vertical axis is this axis, which is uh, which is matching with the centering of the instrument and the axis of bubble tube. This, this thin imaginary line is the axis of the bubble tube. It is parallel to the telescope. Now, the uh, horizontal circle plate uh, of the theodolite is graduated from 0 to 360 and it has got a vernier either it can have a, a least count of 20 second or it can have a least count of 10 second. Now, looking at the parts of the theodolite there will be a, I have named the parts 18 number. So, 18 number is the lower circle plate. This lower circle plate uh, houses the main scale then 17 number is the upper circle plate which houses the vernier. Now, uh, the what are the clamps? The 15 number and 19 number. So, 15 number here is there and 19 number. So, what are these clamps? These clamps, there are four clamps, upper tangent, upper clamp screw, upper tangent screw, lower clamp screw and lower tangent screw. So, the upper clamp allows movement of the main scale and upper tangent screw allows fine movement, mine movement of the main scale. Whereas, the lower clamp allows movement of the instrument totally along with the main scale and vernier that means there is no displacement of the vernier with respect to the main scale the, the total movement is there then you have got a spirit level with the bubble and graduation for the leveling purpose which is given the 21 number here uh, these are the foot screws uh, then uh, then there is one number vertical circle plate so, this vertical circle plate which is there, so this is meant for vertical angular measurements. Then vertical clamp is 11 number, it is uh, clamping the telescope in the vertical plane, it does not move. It also has got a fine adjustment screw like a like the horizontal circle plate. Then the altitude bubble is a bubble which, which will bring the vertical circle plate in uh, level. For This is primarily meant for vertical angle measurements. Then centering, uh, centering, now let us look at the different technical terms. What are the terms we understand? Centering is one method uh, of uh, bringing the instrument exactly on top of the peg which has been driven on the ground. So, you can see here 24 number is a plumb box which is attached to the bottom of the uh, instrument and which is used for centering. There is another uh, crosshair which is called as the optical plummet which is also used for centering. So, it can be centering can be also done by optical plummet. It is an IP specially designed for uh, for that purpose for the centering purpose. Then transiting is another um, the process of transiting is plunging or reversing. So, when you uh, rotate the telescope in the 180 degrees in the vertical place the and then make it point exactly opposite direction we call it as transiting. So, that means the IP is, in, is at the objective end by rotating the telescope in the vertical plane and the uh, objective is at the eyepiece end swinging the telescope. Now, you can understand that by transiting the objective will come to, uh, to uh, towards your eye. So, that will not help uh, to make observations. So, again you have to swing the telescope through 180 degree in the horizontal plane. So, transiting is in the vertical plane and swinging is in the horizontal plane. When you when you do both transiting and swinging, a swing is uh, then your, te your telescope uh, changes from face left to face right. So, face left and face right is this process of uh, changing the face uh, by transiting and swinging as I mentioned earlier. So, that is a very important uh, process uh, when you want to change the direction of the telescope. Okay. So, reflection spot. Uh, so, now we will discuss what do you, uh, if I ask you to draw a neat sketch of a theodolite and name all its spots, you should be able to explain that what is the main scale, what is the vernier scale, what is the clamp screw, what are upper tangent, lower tangent, upper clamp, lower clamp, altitude bubble, vertical clamp and these parts. Okay. Now, we will focus on the uses of a theodolite. What are the different purposes for a theodolite can be used? So, a theodolite has multiple applications. It can be used for measuring horizontal angle. It can be used for measuring vertical angles. Besides that, it can also be used for measuring deflection angle, for magnetic bearing, for horizontal distance between two points, using trigonometrical functions. This we will be discussing in trigonometrical leveling, finding vertical height of the objects. This also we will be discussing in trigonometrical leveling, difference elevation between points also we will be doing in trigonometrical leveling and ranging or prolonging a line in a straight line. So, if I want to bring a straight line 
or if I want to range a line uh, straight uh, direction uh, like the process of ranging which we do, we, we can do it by the theodolite instrument. So, measuring horizontal angle has got uh, three methods, direct ang angle method, repetition method and reiteration method. So, we will uh, we'll today discuss the one method which is the direct angle method. So, in the direct angle method what we do is that if A and B are the two points between wh whom we have to measure the angle the, from the instrument position O, we will keep the instrument at O and we will do the temporary adjustments. So, these are the procedures uh, we are discussed here. Uh, these procedures we will be discussing more detail when we go to the field because these are all procedural steps which are to be done on the field. The, the main purpose is to measure the angle between A and B. So, the upper clamp is the primarily is the clamp which we loosen and we make an observation from we fix the vernier A to 0 uh, when we measure the angle uh, point A and then we loosen the upper clamp and we me measure the point B. So, when we come to the point B we clamp the upper clamp and we take the readings. So, these are the steps which are used normally. So, these are all the steps for measurement of horizontal angle. Similarly, in case of vertical angle, uh, it is an angle made with the inclined line of sight. The inclined line of uh, line of sight makes with the horizontal. So, horizontal line is an imaginary line. You can see here the line O uh, represents the horizontal line here. So, this line is an imaginary line when the telescope is horizontal. So, the telescope makes an angle alpha or beta either in the uh, elevations or in the depressions as shown here or it can be one angle is elevation and one angle can be depression. So, all these angles can be measured by the theodolite. So, there are uh, so again uh, this is a field work which we will be doing on the field in the practical times. So, so, shortly I would like to say that the angles vertical angle can be measured by keeping the uh, telescope uh, inclined uh, to bisect the points A uh, if it is in the elevation and measure the angles alpha and the actual the graduations are seen on the uh, what do you say the vertical circle plate. Then we come to the next application of a theodolite. A theodolite is also used for prolongation or extendation of a line uh, in a straight line. So, if I am having a line A, B, C, D, I can extend this line uh, using the theodolite. So, what I do is that again this is a field method where we will be keep uh, doing these practicals on actually on field, but uh, for this purpose we keep the instrument either on B or C and we take a back set on A and when then we transit earlier we discussed that transiting is to rotate the telescope in the vertical plane. We transit and take a uh, telescope in the, the in the D, D or the Z direction. So, we first as mentioned here we take a back side and then we set the instrument, we take a back side at A, we transit the telescope and we come to the uh, completion of the prolongation of the line. So, by shifting the instrument at every point from B to C, C to D, D to Z etcetera. So, thank you. Uh, now, we will be uh, completing this uh, theodolite uh, basic uh, methods of measuring horizontal angle and vertical angle. The next chapter of unit 2, uh, lesson number 2, we will be discussing uh, theodolite traversing. So, what is theodolite traversing? How it is a big traverse is a polygon. So, how do you do the polygon, polygon uh, measurements and how, what is a gauge traverse table to prepare the work of plotting on the of the traverse. So, this we will be seeing in the next class. Thank you.